Good morning, friends. I'm Mrs. Freed, and there's no mic today because this is an impromptu um, recipe I'm going to share with you. This is one of our family's staple recipes. I don't normally make it for just Mike and me. You can freeze it. It freezes really well, but um, today I'm babysitting, hence my casual attire, um, and I'm going to send home some of the soup with my daughter when she leaves so she doesn't have to cook dinner tonight. It's potato cheese soup. And I have to show you this cookbook. This cookbook, I found the date in the front. It's from 1987. It's one of the very first cookbooks that I ever um, was gifted by my mom. And it's a really old cookbook. It's like crock pots were <clears throat> becoming a thing. And she decided I needed a cookbook. I was engaged at that time. I got married a couple years later. And the potato cheese soup, you can tell I've used this page a lot. I'm going to see if this is anything like what I use now because I don't use the cookbook. And um, I will type the original recipe in the description box for you. I don't think you can get this cookbook again still, but I will look. And if I can find it, I'll put a link down as well. Um, it just calls for potatoes, water, onions, which I don't use, um, bouillon, pepper, cheese, and evaporated milk. So pretty simple ingredients. I don't use onions because I am not a fan of onions, although sometimes I will put them in. Sometimes I add ham. That's usually if somebody's coming over and it makes it more of a meal. We just usually eat it with a salad and bread on the side. So it is one of our family's favorites, but I have changed the recipe up. So I will show you along the way how I do that. So the first thing we need, it calls for six medium pota potatoes, peeled and chopped, six cups. I'm gonna use this many. Nine, ten. There's 11 potatoes here, but some of them are really little. I try to use my littlest potatoes when I'm making potato soup and the bigger potatoes for like baked potatoes and maybe um, air fryer fries so that they're all the kind of the same um, size. But I'm going to get to peeling. I always use a garbage bowl. So that way you don't have to lean over a trash can or anywhere else. You don't want to put these really down your garbage disposal. So I'm gonna to get to peeling. In our back is the peeled and washed potatoes. And I'm gonna cut them up into, you know, small pieces. This says chopped. That's what they call chopped in the recipe, but I usually do a couple um, strips like this. I am nowhere near proficient at chopping. So don't look to me for how you cut things up. I did learn from Rachel Ray. My garbage bowl, that is a garbage bowl from Rachel Ray. So Rachel Ray had a lot of influence on my cooking and I thought it was just genius that a garbage bowl, then you don't have to throw away your, you don't have to get up and go to the trash can every time you need to throw something away. It helps. Um, with time management when you're cooking. Did she come up with that? I don't know, but that's where I learned it. And then she marketed this bowl as a garbage bowl. Did I buy it because it's a garbage bowl? I don't know. I can't remember back that far because I've had it forever, um, but I just like the color of it. It's plastic. We put popcorn in it a lot, so it's not just a garbage bowl. Anyway, you're gonna cut all the potatoes up to look like this. I'll do one more. I do it in slices. Whoops, don't cut yourself. These are cut cone knives, very sharp. They're the best knives. Pretty pricey, um, but with, I have hand issues. My hands don't hurt when I'm done cutting. So, so I, and then I stack up the ones that are flat. So I'm safe. And then I cut the two that aren't flat into strips. This is just the way I do it. And, and a lot of people, you can see all these influencers with those <clears throat> potato choppers or vegetable choppers, and you put it in and you go, you take the lid and you go, boop, 
and it cuts them all up. I don't have one of those yet because I don't mind chopping. But I will not have you watch me chop. So I'll be back. And I'm back. I did keep one of the potatoes not chopped up. I'm going to make um, some probably little fried potatoes for the grandbabies because they're, they're not soup fans yet. Texture, you know, kids and texture. Uh, one of my granddaughters loves mashed potatoes. The other one does not. So I think I'm going to make like cubed air fried potatoes, not fried, not fried in a skillet, air fried potatoes. So I thought it'd be fun to see how much I have here. It calls for six cups. Well, let's see what I did. Again, I never use the recipe since I've been making it for 30 years or so. One. Two. As I make a mess. Three. Four. Uh, five. Six. Yeah, I'm a little bit more, but not, not terribly a lot more. Seven. And a half. Okay, so I just do as many as I want. Six cups is the reference in the recipe. And then it calls for two and a half cups of water and two teaspoons of bouillon granules. You can totally use just uh, chicken stock, chicken, um, chicken, I missed some, chicken stock, chicken broth. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word broth. Um, I actually keep on hand um, chicken granules uh, because it doesn't take up so much room in my pantry. So, I mean, if you use a lot of chicken broth, those boxes or cans take up a lot of room. So I just keep this in there. Um, I do have some bouillon cubes just because I have them. I have them. <laughs> and this does call for two, uh, two teaspoons. So in the past, when I've used these, I've used two of them and the water. I don't measure the water. I'm going to see how much two and a half cups looks like. And then I'll tell you what I usually do. I usually fill the water up to just above the potatoes, but I have more potatoes, a little bit more potatoes in here anyway. It says one, two, and a half. I'm going to do three. See what that looks like. That's really close. So I want to cover the potatoes just until they're covered because you want them to cook. And four cups is going to do it for me. So it's approximately eight cups of potatoes, four cups of water. And now I'm going to add seasonings. It calls for just pepper. And that's not how I cook. It calls for onion too. But since I didn't put that in, I'm going to put some onion powder in. You're going to ask me how much I'm putting in. I don't know. Garlic. I'm Italian. You're going to put a lot of garlic in. I'm going to put this in front of me. So a lot of garlic in. Mm, it already smells good. Onion powder. Mm. If I were to guess, it'd be teaspoon, pepper, half a teaspoon. I am not going to add salt since I'm using bouillon. Um, at the end, if you think that it needs salt, you can add some. Parsley. I don't use parsley if I'm feeding the soup to kids. They don't like green things, but I use parsley. You want to add some spice to it you could get out at the end too and this is the chicken um, granules i'm going to go ahead and use the bouillon cubes because that's just nostalgic to me <laughs> and i've been thinking a lot about my my parents lately who have passed away so i'm just going to add the bouillon cubes that's what my mama used i'm going to use them and you just put them in if you can unwrap them, that is. That's why the granules are easier. You just stick a spoon in there. I think I'm going to do three.
actually there were four cups of water and I think it's one of these per cup. I still think three is okay. Again, if you need more salt when you go to eat it, you can add salt. And then my garbage bowl right there for garbage. I'm going to give it a stir. And that's all you do. You put it in your crock pot. After you stir it, the cookbook says to cook on low for nine to 11 hours or high four and a four and a half hours. I just put it low all day. Today I'm getting a little bit late start. Um, so I'm going to start it on high and then later on I'll move it to low. And then we'll come back and I'll show you what you do next. Here's what it looks like up close. Potatoes, seasonings, water. Pretty simple ingredients. You don't need to use all the seasonings I did. Salt and pepper would do. Well, it depends on, on how much sodium your chicken broth has. Actually, you probably could make this without chicken broth at all. Just use water. So use what you have at home. Quick and easy. This is my slow cooker. It's from the beautiful line at Walmart. And oh boy, have they changed crock pots. Slow cookers, whatever you call them, they have changed over the years. I'm going to insert a picture of my first crock pot, which is when I got this cookbook. A lot of you will recognize it. So potato soup coming up. Yum. This is the crock pot. I remember it so well. And here's the cookbook. Like and subscribe to our channel for more recipes. Some really healthy recipes and some recipes that you need to eat in moderation. And we're back. So about a half hour before you're going to serve it. Ooh, that's hot. I have a jar of potato flakes, like mashed potato flakes. Um, this is not in the recipe. So I put about quarter cup potato flakes in to thicken it up. My family likes a chowder more than they like a runny soup. So it's up to your family what they like. You can even put this in later. I just know they like it creamier. So I put in a uh, quarter cup of mashed potato flakes and I put the lid on. Let it go a little longer before I put in the evaporated milk and cheese. So we'll see you back. Back, I waited maybe 15 minutes. I'm gonna give it a stir. Done, done. So you're gonna add, I let the, it, the heat escape for a little bit, a couple minutes. Okay, then it calls for an entire can or 12 ounces of evaporated milk. You can use Regular evaporated milk, fat-free evaporated milk, um, canned coconut milk. I've used regular milk. I've used almond milk. I've used oatmeal. Whatever kind of milk you want to use, you can use that. So you put that in there. And then it says a cup and a half of shredded cheddar cheese. Okay. I just put a couple handfuls. As I was filming, my daughter came and the dog started barking. So I had to take out the audio and add this voiceover. It was such a yummy soup. We loved it. Sometimes we leave out the cheese. Sometimes we add different herbs. It's versatile and yummy.